Okay, so OpenAI just released GPT 4.1 in the API. This is an improved version on coding instruction following, and it's the first OpenAI model that has 1 million context window. In this video, we're going to look at everything that was announced and also the things that they did not mention, specifically comparison with other providers. This release has three different models, GPT 4.1, 4.1 mini, and 4.1 nano. They really need to work on their naming. After releasing 4.5, they probably should have called it something else. These models are supposed to be better than GPT 4.0 mini and GPT 4.0 and now supports up to 1 million token context window. However, the knowledge cutoff date is June 2024, which is, I think, pretty bad for a coding model because a lot of packages and APIs have changed since then. Throughout this blog post, you will notice that they are comparing GPT 4.1 family only with OpenAI models. I'm going to show you other benchmarks to see how this stacks up with other providers like Gemini or Claude. Now, one important thing that OpenAI has done is that they are releasing some of their internal benchmarks. Most of these frontier labs have their internal benchmarks. So it's really good to see that they're exposing some of these to the community. Okay, so this is something that they highlighted during their release. This shows intelligence versus latency. And a GPT 4.1 family is supposed to have better intelligence at lower latency. However, I personally, I don't like plots like these, especially if the labels are missing. This doesn't really convey a good picture. But in the blog post says that it matches or exceeds GPT 4.0 in intelligence evolves while reducing the latency by nearly half and cost reduction by 83% which is pretty substantial, especially since this is focused on developers. Now, if you're looking for a workhorse model, they recommend to use GPT 4.1 Nano, which is supposed to be the fastest and cheapest model, model available from OpenAI. The good thing is that this Nano also has a context window of 1 million token and gives you very similar performance on needle in the hashtag tests. We're going to look at those later in the video. Now, since these models are really good at instruction following and coding, so I think these are, these are going to be really good options for building agentic systems as well. They also provided some benchmarks on function calling, which we are going to look at later in the video, but it seems to be pretty impressive, specifically when compared to the previous GPT-4.0. Now, these new set of models are going to be only available through the API, so they are not coming to chat GPT and hence the focus on developers. Also 4.5 is going away. They say that GPT 4.5 was introduced as a research preview to explore an experimenter with a large compute intensive model. And we have learned a lot from the developer feedback. I don't know if anybody was actually able to use that given that $150 per million tokens. Okay, so let's look at some of the benchmarks. So the first one is coding. They say that GPT 4.1 is significantly better than GPT 4.0 at a variety of coding tasks, including agentically solving coding tasks, front end, making fewer extraneous edits and following diff formats reliably, ensuring consistent tool usage and more. So the first one that they have provided comparison is based on SWE benchmark. So here it achieves 55%. SWE verified benchmark is specifically focused on Python. Now, if you look at here, they say performance is highly dependent on the prompts and tool used to, uh, to add in reproducing and contextualizing our result. We describe our setup here. I'm going to look at this in another video, but here's the most important bit. Our scores omit 23 of 500 problems whose solutions couldn't run on our infrastructure if they are conservatively set to zero. So for example, if they don't score anything on these 23, then the performance becomes 52%, which is still better than the original GPT-4.0. 
And on this specific benchmark, it seems to be outperforming even the bigger reasoning models like O3 mini high. Now, keep in mind, these new models are not reasoning models. So it definitely shows a huge performance improvement. Now, how does it stack? It stacks up against other models. So here's the Suibench verified benchmark. It has a full version, which is this one, but verified, it's going to be somewhere around here. So in terms of the performance, it's going to fall just behind the Amazon Q developer agent that was specifically designed for coding tasks. So as a model, GPT 4.1 definitely seems to be pretty impressive. As a system, we'll yet have to see how it looks like. Now, one thing which I really like about the release is that they are reporting the results on the ADIS polyglot benchmark, which is a much harder benchmark because it involves a lot more languages. Suibench is only limited to Python. Now, in this case, again, compared to GPT 4.0, it does really good, but it lags behind the OpenAI reasoning models. Now, there are two different types of benchmarks. One is the whole, which basically the model has to make edits to the whole file or recreate the whole file. And then there is diff, which is the model's ability to make changes to specific parts of the file. How does it compare to other models? So here's the Adir Polyglot coding benchmark. We have Gemini 2.5 Pro at the top with almost 73%. If we assume that 52% performance, it will put it right next to Quasar Alpha, which seems to be a version of 4.1 that OpenAI tested in the wild. So assuming that we have something like DeepSeek R1 and DeepSeek V3, it may not be the first option for coding. If you assume that V3 and R1 provides similar performance or better performance at a relatively similar cost. Now, one of the main use cases of coding model is front-end development. So it seems like OpenAI has spent a lot of time in improving the front-end capabilities. So here is an example of what front-end created by GPT-4.0 versus 4.1 looks like on the same prompt. And aesthetically, 4.1 definitely gives you much better front-ends. Okay, so apart from coding, they also highlighted instruction following. Now, GPT 4.1 follows instructions more reliably, and they have measured significant improvements across a variety of instruction following evolves. So the instruction following that they have quantified are format following, negative instructions, ordered instructions, content requirements, ranking, overconfidence. And these are the things that are specifically needed for a really good reasoning model or coding. Now, this is critical for any good coding model because you want the coding model to follow your instructions exactly the way you want, rather than it coming up with creative solutions which deviates from your instructions. So they actually created an internal instruction following eval data set and on this data set, GPT 4.1 seems to be doing much better compared to GPT 4.0. Even the nano and mini versions are doing much better compared to the previous GP, GPT 4.0. Multi-turn instruction following is another aspect that is very important to many developers. So it's important for the model to maintain co coherence deep into conversation and, and keep track of what the user told it earlier. We have seen this problem with some of the models that they will lose context as the conversation goes on and runs for a long time. So they have specifically designed internal evolves for instruction following in multi-turn conversations. Now, most of these frontier labs have their internal benchmarks. I don't think they rely on the external benchmarks that we see, but it's really good to see that OpenAI is actually releasing some of these benchmarks. Overall, GPT 4.1 definitely seems to be better than 4.0, but it lags behind the reasoning models and even GPT 
Now, the thing I am personally interested in is long context, especially given that GPT 4.1 has a huge context window of 1 million token. The question is how reliable it is in retrieving information from that given context. Compared to GPT 4.0 that had only 128,000 tokens, now this 1 million token is going to be a lot, a lot useful if the long context retrieval is great. Now, they, have, they showed this plot, which is needed in the haystack accuracy over different depth. Now, this is a pretty bad test, to be honest. And I think people should start completely ignoring needed in the haystack test, especially if you're trying to retrieve a single piece of fact from the long context. That does not represent real world applications. And OpenAI actually have acknowledged that. So they say, however, few real world tasks are as straightforward as retrieving a single obvious needle answer. They say, we find users often need our models to retrieve and understand multiple pieces of information and to understand those pieces in relation to each other. This is also specifically true for retrieval systems. They introduced a new benchmark specifically for long context retrieval, and they are calling it multi-round co-reference. Now, this benchmark attests the model ability to find and disambiguate between multiple needles well hidden in the text. The evaluation consists of multi-turn synthetic conversation between users and assistants, where the user asks for a piece of writing about a topic, for example, write a poem about tappers or write a blog post about rocks. We then insert two or four or eight identical requests throughout the context. The model must then retrieve the response corresponding to the specific instance, right? So you can ask for one specific thing. Now, if you put two needles in the haystack, GPT 4.1 seems to be doing much better compared to the existing models especially the 4.0 series, even the reasoning tiles, the reasoning models kind of fail uh, compared to GPT 4.1, but we are talking about only two needles. Now, the interesting things start to happen if you increase the number of needles. If we increase this to four, seems like the reasoning models are doing much better. So OpenAI O1 on high settings can do much better at about 8,000 tokens, but its performance degrades as the number of tokens that, that are fed into the system increases. Now, again, for eight needles in the haystack with a shorter context, the reasoning models seems to be doing much better compared to this new series of models. So interestingly enough, after a certain point, for example, 128,000 tokens, the performance kind of a plateaus for even these long context models. So this is something to be aware of. If you are trying to build systems that need to do multiple retrievals of multiple facts. And since the data set is now, now openly available, I hope other model providers are going to test the models on this data set. It will be interesting to see how models like Gemini stacks up against 4.1 in multi-turn retrieval tasks. They also introduced yet another benchmark called GraphWalk, which again is focused on retrieval tasks for long context. And again, GPT 4.1 seems to be doing much better compared to 4.0, but I think it lags behind 01 or actually a pretty, pretty similar performance, but if it, de it definitely lags behind 4.5. Now, in this case, the accuracy is measured for only less than 128,000 tokens because most of these other models have a context window of only 128,000 tokens. Okay, next, they presented some of the benchmarks on multimodal reasoning and multimodal capabilities. So the first one is MMMU. Again, it's doing better than GPT-40. That has been a consistent theme across this release. However, how does it stacks up against other models? So here is getting a 75% score, which will put it 
somewhere right next to Llama 4 Behemoth when it's released. So overall, I think it's doing much better compared to some of the other models on MMMU. Now for reasoning over long video context, is doing 72% on the video MME benchmark. Now again, if you want to put it in context to the other models, this is going to be doing very similar to something like Intern Vision Language Model 2.5 from Shanghai Lab, which is doing about 72% without subtitles, which is around a 72 billion model. So compared to GPT-40, it's definitely doing much better. But if you put it in a broader context, I think you can see that it's on par with some of the open weight models. Now, the most appealing part of this release for developers apart from the performance is going to be pricing. So it's definitely a lot less expensive compared to something like a GPT-40. And it's supposed to be a replacement to this model. So if you look at the GPT-40 versus GPT-4.1, the price difference is about 26% or 25% lower. So it makes it a really viable option given that it does much better on coding and instruction following tasks. However, if you compare it to something like DeepSeek RF1, the pricing is again still pretty high. This might be more comparable to Gemini 2.5 Pro. So if you're using less than 200,000 input tokens, I would say 2.5 Pro might be a better option because it's a much better model. However, if you have more than 2. Or 200,000 tokens, then Gemini 2.5 Pro is slightly more expensive. But for the output token, Gemini 2.5 Pro is going to be a lot more expensive. Now, a related option could be Gemini 2 2.0 Flash or even the new 2.5 Flash that is coming out hopefully in a few weeks. Now, at the end of the blog post, they added benchmarks on academic data sets, specifically focusing on open AI models. Again, they're not comparing any of their, their models to any other providers, which I think is not a good thing, especially you have to look these up separately. I hope they were going to still keep the tradition of putting other models when they're doing these comparisons. But overall, it does seem to be a pretty impressive model, but we'll still have to see the real world applications and usage, given that this is supposed to be just a replacement for 4.0. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.